Today I want to talk about the eTransmit command and why it's important to use when sharing your AutoCAD files. Because if you're like me and you've been using AutoCAD for a long time, I'm sure you've received drawings from architects or engineers, but when you open their drawings, they're completely empty because they forgot to send you their XREFs. So you call or email and ask them to run eTransmit and send you the zip file, but their response is, what's eTransmit? So that's the reason for this video, to explain what eTransmit is and why you should be using it, because it seems like far too many people are not aware of this very useful command. To begin with, eTransmit is a utility that packages your drawing files and all external support files into a zip file, which you can then email or stick on a flash drive and take to a meeting or work from home or just for general archiving purposes. I like to run eTransmit to back up my drawings before making revisions, so I have a copy of the original design in case I have to go back to it at some point. Okay, having said all that, let's see how it works. To start the process, you can type eTransmit at the command line, or just type ET and hit enter. Then you'll get this message saying the current drawing is not saved, so hit yes and that will open the Create Transmittal dialog. In the window on the left is a list of all the items that will be included in the zip file. And if you click the little plus symbol, you can see all the files under each item. And you can uncheck anything you don't want included. You can also switch to the files table if you want to see them listed without being separated under each category. At the bottom, you can click the Add File button and then select any additional files you want added to the zip file. You can also add notes down here if you want, and they'll be included in a notepad file inside the zip folder. I don't usually include notes, but you can if you want. You can run eTransmit using the default standard transmittal setup, but it's best to create your own custom setup to make sure everything gets included in the zip file and saved the way you want. You can see that I don't have any custom setups, so to create one, click the Transmittal Setups button, and then click New, and here you can create a name for the new setup. I like to name my setups by the file format that I'll be saving to, so in this case I'll call this one 2018 format, and then click Continue. The first option you'll see is the transmittal package type. You can leave this set to zip. Next is the file format. The setup I'm creating is for files saved in the 2018 DWG format, so I'm going to choose this one. The visual fidelity option is for when you're sharing drawings with people using older versions of AutoCAD, like 2007. I don't use annotative objects, and I'm not sharing with people using older versions, so I uncheck this but you can click the little I here uh, to find out more about it. For the transmittal file folder, I set this to the desktop so that the zip file is easy to find once it's created. Transmittal file name, I leave this set to prompt for a file name, but there are a few other options if you're interested in looking into those. For path options, I use the organized folder structure, so all the support files get saved into their own folders inside the zip file. But you can choose to have all the files placed in one folder if you want, or keep the files and folders as is, which will follow whatever filing system you're using. For the actions, I choose to purge drawings, but I leave the rest of these unchecked. For the include options, I choose to include fonts. Um, if I was sending a 3D model, I would probably want to include the textures, but uh, I'm typically just sending 2D drawings and I don't need any of these other options. At the bottom, you can type a transmittal setup description if you want, but I typically don't. Okay, now that everything is set up, you can click OK and then close this window. 
And now you can see that your transmittal setup is here and ready to go. So with your new setup selected, click OK. And you can see it's going to be saved to my desktop, which I specified, and it's prompting me for a file name. So I can rename it if I want, but for this tutorial, I'm just going to leave it as is and hit save. Once it's finished, I can find the zip file here on my desktop. And if I extract it, you can see a new folder is created. And inside, you can find all of your drawing files with all of your support files saved inside their own individual folders. Okay, that's about it for eTransmit. If you have any questions or comments, go ahead and post them below. And as always, if you found this video helpful, give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.